Stuck at home in quarantine? With the Long Long Honeymoon Dump Station Simulator, you can go camping from the comfort of your couch. Our exclusive RV VR technology is so realistic, you'll want to wear rubber gloves. Honey, it's time to empty the water tanks. Hey guys, we are Sean and Christy. This is Long Long Honeymoon. In this video, we're going to talk about one of our favorite destinations in all of North America. We're talking about the Florida Keys and specifically Key West. A lot of you will remember that this whole honeymoon started when we got married in Key West, Florida, right on Smathers Beach. Why do we love Key West? Well, to me, Key West is one of the most exotic places that you can drive to in North America and take your RV. And it's exotic because if you look at it on a map, you're not only in the southernmost point of the continental United States, you're on a true island. And all those Florida Keys are based on coral. That's what makes for a key. <laughs> There's something about everything from the scenery to the wildlife down there that's just unique. There's a unique culture around the town of Key West. You really feel like you're out there. Key West is a unique destination that not everybody is going to love. I sort of joke and say it's like New Orleans in the Caribbean. Bourbon Street on the beach. Yeah. <laughs> because it's a party place. Yeah, it's very much a party place. If you don't like to have a good time, Key West may not be for you. <laughs> there are certain festivals, certain times of year when yes. Key West gets really rowdy, but we're just looking at Key West as a fun, unique, exotic place to go. First of all, a lot of you are going to ask where we stay. We have always had our RV with us when we have visited, and we typically end up in a private park that's about 15 or so miles outside of Key West, and it's a park called Blue Water Key. A couple things to know about Blue Water Key. First of all, it's very expensive. It's where we stayed uh, the week we got married. It was definitely a splurge. And every time we're there, I feel like we're really splurging. And by expensive, I mean typically more than a hundred bucks a night. For an RV site, that's a lot of money. Now these sites that we have stayed at are usually waterfront and their waterfront sites have tiki huts that are private. They're very well landscaped. They all have private piers if you're on the waterfront. So if you have the private pier, you can snorkel or scuba dive off of your pier, swim off your pier if you want. You can rent a boat or a jet ski and tie it to your pier. So it's a very unique camping experience, I think. Yeah, we haven't encountered anything else like it in our travels <laughs> throughout North America. Even though it is a splurge, it's one that we sort of justify for its uniqueness. And there are some other places around there you can stay. There's another RV park that's a little closer to town, and it's not nearly as scenic as Blue Water. Mm -hmm. And then there's a state park further outside of town. Unfortunately, some of those parks, including by a Honda State Park, experienced a lot of damage during the last major hurricane that swept through the Keys. And some of those parks are still closed today. You'll have to obviously do some homework and see which parks are available. Blue Water Key didn't really sustain much damage, but there were a couple of KOA parks and Thousand Trails parks and state parks that really just were almost completely wiped out. So they started over from scratch. So they are still rebuilding as of today. Call and check and see what their current status is. Other thing to keep in mind about Key West is the drive in and the drive out. You know, it's a two lane highway all the way pretty much from Homestead, Florida down to Key West. So you're not gonna be going at breakneck speeds. Plan accordingly. In fact, we usually drive about halfway and stop in Marathon and spend a night and then drive the rest of the way the next morning. So we're not missing the view because you wanna drive that drive during the peak parts of the day so that you can see the amazing turquoise turquoise water, take in the sight of driving these bridges from island to island because it's a really, really unique driving experience and something that you really want to experience anywhere else in North America. Yeah, that drive through the Florida Keys it pops up on a lot of top 
five and top 10 scenic drive lists in North America because you're going from key to key and across these bridges and you just have stunning views of that beautiful water. And, and the further south you get, just the more brilliant that water looks in terms of its color. And again, take advantage of those other keys along the way down and back up. They can make for great stopovers and they all have unique uh, characteristics and vibes all of their own. So they're definitely worth stopping for. Don't just drive past at breakneck speeds. And up and down throughout the keys, you're going to find some other places to stay. You know, you'll find a number of privately owned RV campgrounds uh, that offer beautiful, sometimes waterfront mm -hmm. camping. So you'll just have to do a little bit of homework on that. Get on the web dig around and you'll find some good ones. Architecture on the island I think is really pretty and it has a unique history. Something unique to Key West is the presence of chickens. There are a lot of chickens roaming around town freely. And you'll see them everywhere. You'll see them uh, walking them down the street. Yes, you will see chickens crossing the road. You'll see them in gas stations. You'll see them sometimes in restaurant courtyards. One of Key West's most famous residents of all time was Ernest Hemingway who had a home here, and now his home is a museum, and you can go in and tour it. And it's a really interesting place. In the kitchen, Hemingway kept a very simple, small, flat screen TV. Nothing large and ostentatious. Just a little LCD panel. You know, I can remember working in Yellowstone Park, reading For Whom the Bell Tolls every day, when I would get out of the kitchen and come home to my dorm from work. So I've always been a big Ernest Hemingway fan and you absolutely must go see the Ernest Hemingway house when you're in Key West. It's a really fantastic property to visit. You'll learn a lot about Hemingway and about the history of the property. And oddly on the property, you're gonna find six toed cats. I think they have like 25 or so that yep. still live there on property. They are free to roam wherever they want. So if you're allergic to cats, you might wanna take note of that. But they just roam through the house, the garden, gardens, around the pool area, and just enjoy life as a Hemingway six-toed cat. So Hemingway's house is one of those must-see destinations. Uh, you absolutely have to go to the southernmost point in the continental United States. They have a big marker there, and it's the law. You must stop and have your photo taken there. Everybody does it. Key West is only 90 miles north of Cuba. If you stand right there on the edge of the water and close your eyes, you can smell the cigars. I swear. The street that the southernmost point is on, it's sort of in a sharp, like 90 degree turn. And we've talked to some people who actually drove their RVs into Key West. I do not recommend that. Key West is a very small, quaint town. The roads are not very wide. Most of them have parking on both sides and it's not really built for large vehicles. Now, of course, you see 18 wheelers that deliver supplies and that sort of thing, but those guys are used to turning into super tight spaces. So if you are not a professional driver that is used to driving in super tight spaces, you may want to avoid it because you can get yourself into a pickle there pretty quickly. Yeah, the first time we went to Key West, we had just purchased our big three quarter ton pickup truck. I did actually parallel park our truck once downtown in Key West and it was not a lot of fun. You know parking is so tricky down here. There, there are one or two parking decks but even those parking decks have a height restriction so we noticed a couple of big trucks for example that could not fit into the deck. 
So you might even look into taking an Uber or something like that, taking a, ta a taxi. Uh, it just might make your getting around town more pleasant and less stressful. So Key West has a bus system now. It's called the Duval Loop and it follows this path here through the old town and it runs every 30 minutes in the morning and then starting at 10 a.m it runs every 15 minutes until midnight so you know it has what 16 stops throughout old town so it's an easy way to get around and it's free free Free. so i think they basically are trying to alleviate some of the parking issues so they want people to just park in one spot and instead of trying to move your car around, just hop on this. In the heart of town, there's a street called Duval Street and it's sort of the bourbon street of Key West. It's a party street where people uh, we'll just stroll up and down the sidewalk from one bar to the next. You'll hear a lot of live music up and down Duval Street. And there are a number of famous places down there. The one that really stands out to us is a place called Sloppy Joe's. And here's Chrissy's Sloppy Joe's t-shirt. This was, is an older restaurant in the heart of Key West where, yes, the Sloppy Joe sandwich was invented and it was supposedly a favorite of Ernest Hemingway's. He actually, actually encouraged the naming of the bar. It used to be called something else and it changed the name to Sloppy Joe's at Ernest Hemingway's suggestion, I guess. They uh, have a famous event every year. They have the Papa Lookalike Contest. So they have a Ernest Hemingway Lookalike Contest once a year. I think it's on his birthday, maybe. And a lot of people flock there to compete to see if they look like Ernest Hemingway. So it's just a fun atmosphere there. They usually always have live music. The food's good. Any time of day you go there, people are going to be there having a good time. So we definitely recommend a visit to Sloppy Joe's. There are a number of other really great restaurants in Key West. A favorite of ours is a place called Blue Heaven. And it's just really good food in a unique kind of courtyard atmosphere. Yeah, they also have cats that stroll through. It's just, you know, they're laid back. In fact, when we got married in Key West, there was a cat that was very fond of Sean, jumped in his lap and just proceeded to lounge about and uh, like this one here. But <laughs> whatever it is, I don't know, animals are drawn to Sean. They all love him. So he's the... The animal whisperer. Oh, one more great place to eat that's sort of unusual is Eaton Street Seafood Market. It's in an old gas station, sort of in the center of town. It's not really near any other restaurants or, you know, shops or anything. It's just sort of like on a street corner. But you can go in, you can pick your fresh fish out of the case. You can tell them how you want it prepared, if you just want it grilled, sauteed, blackened and they will cook it fresh for you and bring it out to your little table out front. And their lobster rolls are awesome too. There are a lot of really wonderful activities to do around Key West. Something you should know is Key West is not really famous for its beaches. Yeah. It's not a beach destination exactly. Yeah, it's really more about the snorkeling and scuba diving and that sort of thing, just because of the coral reefs. So I encourage you to do that rather than just going and sitting on the beach. Not that the beach isn't nice, but they're pretty small, you know, and really the snorkeling and getting out on a boat is what it's really all about. So I encourage you to do a boat tour. We did a sailboat tour the last time we were there and actually also did a kayaking trip through the mangroves. That was really cool. Something else you can do that is boat related is take a day trip to Dry Tortugas National Park. It is a tough national park to get to because the only way to get there is on a boat or a seaplane. So you're either taking the boat, which is a big ferry, or charter a seaplane to get there. Most people take the ferry. It runs pretty much every day unless there's really bad weather. You leave really early in the morning, like 6.30 or so, and you're back usually I think around 5 p.m. But it's about a three hour ride on the boat to get out there. And then you have, you know, several hours to explore the island and then you hop back on the boat and come home. Yeah, we've done a complete video about Dry Tortugas National Park, and so be sure and you, you check that out. Something else you absolutely must do when you're in Key West is go watch the sunset at Mallory Square. So it's kind of a tradition in Key West to watch the sunset at Mallory Square, and there's always a big crowd down here. 
uh, at least hundreds, probably thousands of people who gather, get a cold drink, and just enjoy the beautiful views. There are always a lot of really interesting boats out there to watch. And of course you can go out and do sunset cruises and that sort of thing. But it's really a striking, beautiful scene. Nothing else quite like it, even in Florida. I think there's something about being down here in the Keys, being on an island, it just feels different here. Yeah, there usually will be live music performers. They'll be dancing for tips or playing instruments for tips or doing a magic show. There's always something interesting to see, like a mermaid, for instance. West has a great dining scene. They have lots of really great restaurants with amazing fresh seafood. There are several waterfront bars that have great seafood. Conch Republic is a good one. It's right there in the harbor. In fact, we had our dinner with our families there the night before we got married after coming off a sunset snorkel tour. So that sort of has uh, special memories for us. And also another restaurant in the harbor that has special memories for us is the Commodore restaurant because that's where we had our our wedding dinner after we got married with both of our families. So that's sort of more of a white tablecloth dining experience, but it's a great place to eat and I would recommend it. Oh, oh, my craziness will never be seen, but it was not. The shock and surprise of life. You may be wondering the best time of year to visit Key West. <laughs> Key West is very seasonal because it is so far south it gets really hot there in the summer. So summer is probably the low point in tourist season for Key West. Tourism in Key West spikes during those winter months. And yes, that would be the best time to visit because it's still going to be warm, sunny, and comfortable, but it's not gonna to be too hot. There won't be too many insects and so forth. But it will be expensive. And it will be probably crowded <laughs> and you're gonna have a hard time finding a site. Yeah, so you have to set. plan pretty far in advance if you're going to want to be there during their peak season, which is, you know, that sort of December to February block, I believe. We got married there in uh, mid-May, and it was pretty warm. I mean, you know, it was probably 95 during the day, mm -hmm. but we're from Alabama, so we're used to that. And so it wasn't the high season. We didn't really have trouble getting a site. And it really cooled off around sunset when yeah. we got married and I was pleasantly surprised at how comfortable it was out there on the beach. And the marriage has held up pretty well. You know. So that's it, guys. A look at one of our favorite destinations in North America, Key West. I would encourage you to go to Key West. I would also suggest that you do a little homework and see what's happening at Key West when you go yeah. so that you don't arrive during the middle of a big festival for which you are not properly prepared yeah. or which doesn't suit you. Yeah. Just warning you up front. Yeah. But Key West can be a family friendly destination. I would say avoid Duval Street if you have small kids and really you'll be fine. And if you're not there during one of those big festivals, I think you're just gonna find a fun party destination. And also a quaint little town, you know, on the outskirts. So if you don't want a party, there are parts of Key West that you can still visit and enjoy and you'll have a great time. Have you been to Key West? Do you have suggestions to offer us or our audience? If you do, please post a comment beneath this video. Let us know the good places and the fun stuff to do in the Keys. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends and family. Please make sure you're subscribed. And until next time, what do we say? Lolo. Lolo.